Hello YouTube, I wanted to do a video today kind of covering symlinks. Um, symlinks are a very useful uh, tool um, that you can use to chop down very long addresses. And I'm going to give you some pretty good examples today. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty, pretty short and brief and uh, try to cover what I can um, pretty quickly. So let me get a couple things open here real quick. Okay, what you're seeing up here is the root directory for my for my installation okay down here um, what you're seeing is a very long address that takes me into um, the basically the environment or the location um, where I'm working on the live DVD uh, for Bahamut OS um, the basically the, the image for it um, but it is a work in progress the point I'm going to try to make here is, is show you what the actual address is. This is very long. I mean, for me to do anything in here to get to this location from within the terminal or within a script that I'm writing, um, I have to now, as it is right now, I have to type all of this out, and it's a real pain. Um, slash home, slash Bahamut, slash live CD, um, slash work, slash x86-64, slash AI root FS, just to get here. And most of what I'm doing in here um, will be in the Etsy folder or the home folder for the most part. Um, so all of this, man, that's a lot to type out, you know, every time. You know, it's a real pain. And what I want to do is I want to shorten that down so that all I have to do is type in slash whatever and it takes me here directly. And that's what sim links are good for. So what I'm going to do is in the home directory, or the, the root directory rather, I'm going to create a sim link that when I type in slash whatever I name it, and it'll probably be like LD64, because this is the 64-bit work environment, um, and that'll be the root. Um, when I type in, you know, LD64, it'll take me here, and then from, from there I can do, you know, home, Etsy, or whatever, but it shortens all of this extra crap. Okay, let me show you how that's done and show you how it, it, it's practically, it, it's usable in a, in a practical sense. Okay, in order, be, now I think, I'm pretty sure, because I'm creating a symbolic link, and this may be true globally, but it may be also because of where I'm creating the link at, I'm, I'm placing a file in the root directory, so that I know without a doubt that's going to require sudo, it's going to require permissions. So the, the command is sudo, then it's ln, dash s and that's how you make a symbolic link. This is very much like a shortcut, okay, um, to a location. You know, I'm not even really sure if it works for files necessarily, but I'm, I'm positive it works for locations. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a sudo ln dash s to create the sum link, and then I'm going to, I'm going to put in this monster address because that's what goes first. The, the location that you are linking to is the first address you put in. And then the second address is the actual link itself. Okay? The, the link file, which is basically where you're going to have the link. Um, so back over here, I'm going to do home, Bahamut, and this is live CD, and then work. And I'm, <laughs> I'm looking right over here, you know, to see, see what I have to do. Um, work and then AI. Whoops, work. I'm sorry. XC. And this is also why you want to make sure that you do this also because it's an awful lot to type in all the time. Air root FS. Okay. So now I've got this written in as the first part. The second part is going to go here. Now I can call it whatever I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it LD for live disk, essentially. 64, and then hit enter, put in my happy password, and you'll see now it's created the link. Now, I do want to point this out. If you look at the icon right here for LD64, the sim link I created, it is a picture. The icon is of a folder. It is not a folder. This is a file. So if you ever want to remove this sim link, you use rm instead of rmdir. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna remove a file rather than remove a directory. Don't get confused about that. Um, that 
that can really cause you to pull your hair out because you can't figure out how to get rid of it. Um, but anyway, yeah, just a little tidbit of information. But if I click on this now, it takes me here. Now you're going to say, you might say, well, JT, that's not the same. Okay. And why would you think that? Because this one has the Bahamut OS folder, but this one doesn't. So it's not the same place. You might think I'm being redirected back to root. The reason why you don't see it is this is a hidden folder. It starts with a dot. And up here in this instance of Dolphin, um, that folder, the permissions or the, the settings for it don't show hidden files. See how it's un unchecked? Now if I check it, there it is. As you can see now, this did redirect right back over here. But instead of having to type all of this out, you know, all this out right here, now all I have to do is type in slash LD64 and it's going to take me here. And I'll give I'll show that to you real quick. So over here back over here, I'll do a list and I'll do a list all. Okay? I think I'll just do it like that with a single. And we'll do LD64. Enter. One root 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 LD64. And that goes to home Bahamut. Live. Maybe I do need the second one to list off everything that's in here. Yeah, there we go. If I do all, it'll list off everything in here, and including that hidden folder. Okay? So you can see by doing that. So as an example, if I want to go into the home folder from here, um, I can do a CD and then LD64, use my new sim link, and then just go home. Do it like that. Hit enter. Now if I list that off, you'll see what's in here. I have one single folder called Bahamut. Now if you go over here, you look in there, I have one single folder called Bahamut. Okay, you see how you can use that to shorten things up. That sim link is unbelievably useful. Okay, especially, and one thing that's nice that kind of sets us aside from like Windows shortcuts is that you can quite literally use this sim link in code. You know, if you're writing a bash script, shell script, or whatever, um, you can use this location. And as long as your computer is set up for it, to recognize that, you know, when, when it goes there to, to see this link, this link will direct as it should. So that, that makes it really nice. That is one use for using sim links. Okay. There, and I'll, I'll give you just one other one that I kind of came across. And this is the great example too, because it is actually this folder, this Bahamut folder right here. Um, if I go back into my root directory, up here and I go to the home directory. Let me show you this. Home directory. What you see here is Bahamut 64. This is a sim link. Okay, just like what we created. I created it in this folder though. So instead of doing like up here where I created it, all I did was put in, you know, slash LD64. That put it in the root folder. What I did here is I put in slash home slash Bahamut 64 is what I put in. So it created it here. But what this does is this is a redirect into this folder into this folder. Okay? So if I click on that, you'll be able to see it. See? It redirects back here. So what this in, in a practical sense, what this allows me to do now, because this, you gotta understand, in your home folder, this is now a new user. What this is doing is it's redirecting to the user files in my live CD uh, user folder. What this allows me to do is this allows me to log in as Bahamut64 but have it use all the configuration files for the Bahamut user in my work or in my live CD or my live DVD. You understand that? So it's like it's like by sticking that in there and having it redirect back here, it now allowed me to visually go in and make changes to the UI and do things like that and be able to save everything, all the changes that I make in the correct folder. 
You see? So it, there's very practical uses for using symlinks, and that's just one example that I've that I've kind of come across that actually brought me to this. Um, found out what a symlink was and went, oh wait a minute, what if I what if I used it like this? Would this work? And it does. Okay. So if you are working on a custom distro, customized you know customized um, Arch ISO um, live DVD or whatever, you can use this trick and it works. There are things, and I can tell you this, and I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but there are things that, obviously, when you go to create your DVD, um, that you're going to want to delete out of here. You're going to have to change. So as an example, like, let me go ahead and list this out for you. Oops. I'm still in the home directory. LS all... If, if you look in here, let me just change into Bahamut real quick. There. This, this is actually what I was wanting to show you. If I look in here, in this directory, which is all of this stuff here, okay, you'll see bash history, bash logout, accession, you know, X and N. They're all, they're all listed here, you know, over here on this side. See? Now, one thing that I did notice is some of these say Bahamut 64 and the others say Bahamut. What this also tells me is that the cache has been changed. The dbus, there's entries in the dbus that have been added in the NV um, folder. There's something in there that's been added, but all the rest have more or less stayed the same as the user Bahamut. Okay. Um, what I, that also tells me is that when I go to, to write it, I better check because then I have to change the owner. You see? So it's it's not perfect. So if you are doing a live DVD type situation or something like that, you know, you need to be looking at stuff like this as well. But in any case, it's not perfect, but it does work. It allows me to log in, go in, make changes, um, have all the changes saved in the location where it needs to be and then you know like I said I'll go through and I'll there, there's certain things that I'll remove especially out of the configuration folder um, things for like the network you know because I don't want it trying to set up a network based on you know my hardware if it's going to be used on someone else's machine their hardware is likely to be different so the, the, the configuration files need to be different so there are things that I'm going to have to go through through here and take out, okay? But what I have noticed is that by doing it this way, all of my customizations are being saved, which is really, really hard to do um, to get everything to look exactly the same regardless of, of what user is using it. That's a, It's a difficult thing to do. So this is just a, a point where I'm starting with it. But in any case... This, this video was about symlinks. Hopefully you figured out and you found this useful. If, it, if you have, um, by all means, please like, subscribe, um, leave any comments, shoot me a message. If there's anything I can help you out with, please do that and, uh, you know, share the video. You know, if you know other people that are using Linux and they need, and you think they can use this information, shoot, shoot it over to them. I don't mind if you share the videos. It's cool. Um, matter of fact, it actually helps a little bit. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for future videos.